Um, okay, welcome to the Ego Striker Live post match show. Um, it just ended the game between Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea 1 1. First game of our AFCON 2023 campaign ends in a draw. Um, Iban scored the goal to give Equatorial Guinea the lead. Um, in the 35th minute, Victor Osime equalized in the 38th minute. And, you know, we missed a host of chances. All in all, it's a poor result for the Super Eagles. It's a poor start to the tournament. Um, what do we say? We need to step things up. We need to step things up. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I know lots of people have lots of things to say. But I would first of all give my thoughts um, I'll have my special guest and then, of course, there would be a chance for other people to join. And share their thoughts as well. Um, first of all, I will say Jose Pesero shocked a lot of us with his lineup for this game. Um, a lot of people were not expecting the lineup or the system. Um, he went with a 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, I think he got some things right. He got some things wrong. Um, Umar Bali in goal, he didn't look shaky at all. You know, Umar Bali looked like he had been there before. Um, of course, he considered one goal, but there's not too much he could do about it. He didn't really have anything to save. The few times that he needed to command his box from corner kicks, you know, from free kicks. Um, he seemed to command his box well. Um, so, yes, nothing too much to talk about there. Um, Zedu Sanusi at left back. Um, I wanted um, Bruno Oyemechi, but it doesn't mean that I was right because Zedu didn't have a fantastic game. But there's not too much to talk about in Zedu's performance today. He didn't do anything on the defensive side. Um, no tackles, no, you know, no blocks. He had one interception, one clearance. Um, his crosses were not really threatening um he of course missed a big chance in the first half as well um cutting him a bit of slack because he's a defender um but you know zedu didn't really have too much to show for in today's match in center of defense it was ekong tristekong and shemi ajayi um i think both of them were decent ekong won most of his aerial duels um you know he's a physical presence you expect him to do so he made two intercept interceptions made three clearances um he the only thing that i wasn't quite happy about was you know the balls that were just playing from the defense into the attack asking osime to chase asking simon to chase i felt like the defenders could have composed themselves more to help our build up you know to make it a little bit more um intentional with the way that we're creating our chances and creating our attack um shemi ajayi shemi ajayi had a decent game i will say um two interceptions one block two clearances um he had in every moment and it's something that um, if you watch my match preview, I spoke about it. Our two center backs and having nervy moments. Um, one chance that came over the top for um, Equatorial Guinea, and then he just all of a sudden fell down in the box. In fact, the ball even hit his arm. So that any on another day, a wicked VAR could have given a penalty there. Um, I don't know. I think maybe they eventually gave up side for it. But he had just one nervy moment. And it is something that has been a pattern for us. We've been seeing it in match after match that our centre-backs can have those shaky moments when everything is supposedly supposed to be under control. Um, Ola, you know, at right back, played 83 minutes, created one chance. I thought Ola, you know, worked hard, you know, in the game. Um, Moses Simon was largely ineffective when he was playing on that right-hand side. Um, and Ola, you know, was trying to cover ground and trying to do well on that right-hand side. You know, he won most of his duels in the match. Um, he had a shot on target as well, um, which maybe he should have crossed. Um, but, but yeah, Ola, you know, I would say had a fairly decent game. Um, going into the midfield... Alassane Yusuf was probably the player of the match. Um, fantastic until he got injured and had to be subbed off in the 69th minute. Um, you could almost see that injury coming, honestly, because the number of times that he was getting fouled and just getting hit by the um, Equatorial Guinean players was actually quite alarming. Um, so I wasn't 
you know, I wasn't happy, but at the same time, he just took such a beating in that game, Alassane Yusuf. But while he was on, he was quite good. You know, won most of his draws, created one goal scoring chance, um, won eight draws, if I should name the number, made three tackles, made two interceptions, and I feel like he was probably our best player today. Um, just like people expect him to do, um, just like people that have hyped him up have, have talked about, he covers every blade of grass and he works so hard. Unfortunate to get that injury again, but I give credit to Alassane Yusuf. Frank Onyeka partnered him in midfield. Onyeka had a decent game, created one chance, completed most of his passes, you know, won most of his draws, but, you know, made four tackles as well. But the key moment, the key moment that cost us in this game, the goal for Equatorial Guinea, was a mix-up between Alexi Wobi and Frank Onyeka. And then Frank Onyeka, I don't know if there was no communication there. Um, I don't know if he just thought Iwobi was going to be there. Um, but Onyeka just gave the ball away, you know, on the edge of our box. And it cost us because it immediately led to the goal for Equatorial Guinea. So, Frank Onyeka could have done better on that side. Um, he wasn't as box-to-box, -box, you know, he wasn't as Frank the Tank as we usually see him and we usually expect him to be. But I thought overall, he wasn't poor, you know, he wasn't poor, um, but he wasn't good. So, quite average performance. But... He cost us for that goal, which is obviously the key moment in, you know, the, or rather a key moment in the game. I would say it's the key moment because even after that goal, we missed like a million chances. Um, so I'll move on to the attack. Moses Simon on the right side for the first half, on the left side for the second half while he was on. Um, in the first half, Moses Simon was a passenger. He was largely ineffective. And that is one area where I think Coach Jose Pesero got it wrong. Um, he put Moses Simon on the right. I've said it. Putting Moses Simon on the right is like putting Iron Robin on, on the left. You know, you're just taking away all his natural instincts. You're taking away everything that he normally does to be effective. You're taking away everything that we know he can do properly. Um, Moses Simon's instinct is to cut in on his right foot and to whip in a cross. If he cannot cut in on his right foot, he fakes as if he's going to cut in and he runs and then plays a cross with his left foot. When you tell him to switch flanks, you know, ordinarily you would want to imagine that it will come naturally to him or because he's a professional and he'll be able to do that. But it's like if you put Chukweze on the left as well, you're also going to get nothing from Chukweze. If you put him on the left. You know, um, I I wasn't, you know, pleased with Joseph Pesero's decision there because I could have predicted it. If you check our comments, um, I, I mentioned it to somebody before the game. Simon doesn't play on the right. He doesn't do anything on the right. And he showed in this game. He learned his lesson. He switched flanks at halftime. Um, he switched flanks at halftime. But in the second half, he still wasn't able to get um, under control. You know, he, he tried once or twice and it just didn't work. On the left-hand side, probably our best attacker was um, Ademola Lukman. You know, he was trying to be creative. He got the assist for Osime's goal, of course. He had another good chance that he created for the side. You know, was running down the flank, was trying to, to create opportunities for us. But again, our build-up play was just not there. Our build-up play was just not was just not there. You know, so as much as Ademola Lukman was trying hard, the link-up wasn't really working. And no surprise that we couldn't, you know, we couldn't do more. Um, Alex Iwobi, in the first half, Iwobi was largely ineffective in the first half. Again, was also a part of the error that we made to concede that goal. Lack of communication between Iwobi and Onyeka. And neither of them took control of the situation. You know, commanded the ball and helped us to clear that ball. You know, or just to put it out of danger. And then, of course, he let the Equatorial Guinea go. Um, in the second half, Iwobi came more and more into the match. You know, he created two good goal scoring opportunities. He created... The one on one that Victor Osime missed. Um, but yeah, it will be, I'll say, decent game. Poor in the first half, much better in the second half. He created chances, you know, he, he did enough for us to win that game with the chances that he created, frankly. Um, and Osime up front, our top striker, our number nine best player in Africa, you know, scored a header today, fairly easy header. But other than that, I wasn't pleased with Osime. He had more than one opportunity to score a goal. Even the one that was ruled out for offside, he missed it. Or rather, the goalkeeper saved it. The one that was clearly onside. Fantastic ball by um, Alex Iwobi. I was expecting Osime to just open up his body and curl it into the right bottom corner. He tried to go near post and he just played it blatantly wide of the target. Um, 
disappointing performance today by Victor Osime. He should have won us that game. I'm sure he knows it. I'm sure the coach knows it. All the players know it. They will tell him in the locker room. I don't want him to put his head down. He needs to wake up. He needs to be better for the game against Ivory Coast. But today was disappointing from Victor Osime. Um, and then very quickly to the substitutes. Joaribo came on for Alassane Yusuf. When he came on for the first 10 minutes, we were having the same contribution. Me that was watching on TV and him that was there on the pitch, we were having the same contribution. Nothing. Um, and then towards the end of the game, he woke up. He started to do a little bit more. And then, you know, he, he was a bit effective. But at the same time, Aribo has not proven to be a player that can grab the game by the scuff of the neck and can put Nigeria out of our misery or that can, can do something amazing for us. Um, overall, I'll say decent performance. Samuel Chukweze, Samuel Chukweze came off the bench, um, replaced Moses Simon, but was largely disappointed in my own opinion when he came on. Um, his decision-making continues to be an issue. His decision making continues to be an issue. Samuel Chukweze gets the ball and he just nine times out of ten for Nigeria recently. He just makes the poor decision. Either the poor pass or the poor shot or the decision not to pass or the decision not to shoot. Chukweze today was nothing to write him about. You know, people will say or people were saying, why is coach playing Simon ahead of Chukweze? But Chukweze didn't cover himself in any glory at all when he did come on eventually calvin bassi came on didn't do much tried to create some things down the um, left flank um his crosses most of them were getting blocked i think he had one cross that caused a little bit of danger towards the end of the game but unfortunately between onwachu chukweze osime they did not really know what to do with it but osai samo came on as well for a lie you know um played 14 minutes created one chance for us was accurate with all his passes um but you know didn't have too much time to impact the game. And then same thing with Paul Onwachu. Came on late in the match. You know, decent hold up play one or two times that he actually got the chance to be effective. Towards the end of the game, I felt like, you know, between him and Osime, they could have done better to score that final chance. Or to at least get a shot, you know, towards the goal for that final chance. The goal. Um, just like we've seen in many Super Eagles games of recent memory, um, we dominate, we have chances, we let our opponents score <laughs> first, and then we struggle to equalize, and then, you know, it ends like that. We saw it against Lesotho, we saw it against Zimbabwe, we saw it in the game against, um, I forget who it was, Mama Baudi's team, Guinea-Bissau, at the other time when he beat us, we just control games and we let our opponents to take advantage of our for you know, finishing. Um, thank you very much for joining me, George Abe, Super Eagles legend, um, like Smith Lai, he likes to say, you won the golden bronze for Nigeria at the AFCON in 2004. Um, thank you very much, George Abbey. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Disappointing results for us, but um, we just have to move on to the next game now. Mm. Um, so, yes, you've mentioned a disappointing result. 1-1 one, one against Equatorial Guinea. Um, we were expecting Nigeria to be able to win this game. Um, we've done, we've seen the NFF campaigning through our social media before tournament started. All of us on social media, on traditional media, we've done our best to hype up the tournament, hype up the team for this match. Um, overall, what, what did you think of the way we played today um, before even getting to the results? I think it was poor. The way we set up, you know, the, the whole structure of the team, you, you could see that, they, that, that we lacked coaching, we lacked the technical nows. Um, tactically, we were poor. The gaps between our midfield and our defence, like I said, the first half, the number six for them, who eventually scored the goal, was picking up little pockets in between our midfield and our defence, just behind Oyeka there. He was coming off the line, off Sanusi, and I was saying to the, the guys watching it with me here, and I was saying, either Sanusi stays with him all the way inside of the midfield or pass him on. That's where you communicate with your midfield players. Hey, behind you, you talk. You don't just keep quiet and, and wait for things to happen. And, and that's where experience comes in. Ekon, can you smell danger? Ajayi, can you see the danger coming? Because if you see where he scored the goal from, there's nobody close to him. He's, he's just standing there waiting for the pass to come through. So I think tactically we got it wrong. I, th I think the midfield, they had 3v2 there. We had Yusuf and Oyeka. And they were just passing it around us easily. I think the next game we need to rectify the distances. It's all right when we have the ball, we can spread out and attack. 
But once we lose the ball, we need to come compact, stay close to each other, drag a Wobi in, bring um, Luke Mann in, and make sure the midfield is compact. Defend, and then you can break away from there. Mm. Very well said. You know, I like um, hearing your tactical um, view on it because, of course, you've played the game at the highest level and you know what should be done right. Um, do you have any thoughts on the centre-back pairing? Um, a lot of people were expecting Calvin Bassi to play alongside Shemi Ajayi in this match, but coach went with the experienced William Trist Ekong. How do you think they, they fed and how do you think they played well together? I don't think they were under too much pressure from this team. Going forward, I would be concerned. I was concerned even before the tournament started. Our defence is our weak point. It's, that's where I think we're vulnerable. Going forward, we can create chances. The, the players we've got, we can create chances and we can score. We've proven that. And also, we've proven that we're vulnerable at the back. We can see too many opportunities. In the first half, the number 10 was... Moving on to Ajayi's side, and it was causing a little problems in the first few minutes of the game. Yeah. And that, that's where I feel we need to rectify this. And that's where we need the coach to now step up and fix the problem. It's not as if the players we have are bad players. With the players we have, we can do much better defensively. Don't allow us to be too exposed, too open. And from the comments I've, I've been reading so far, if we look at the goal we conceded. Nobody has picked up on this. Our keeper had the ball in his hand. He decides to kick it, if you remember. He kicks it out of his hand for the first time in the match. Before then, he was passing it out from the back. All of a sudden, you think, oh, I need to do something special. Let me kick one. That ball works his way back through our midfield into our net. Mm. All that is cool. Coaching and experience and communication. You don't need to, to do anything special. Just do what you're doing. You're playing well. You've started the tournament well. Keep it simple. Get it in your hand. Pass it to the nearest man to you. Don't try and be Edison for Man City. Or, you know, like try and do something spectacular to stand out. You're doing a good job. Don't hand over possession too easy. Yeah. The weather is hot. Keep possession. Keep the ball. Even if you're not causing any problems, let the other team run about. Let them use their energy. Let them get tired. Mm. Rather than us getting the ball safe and just handing it over to the opposition. Because when we come up against better teams, no, no disrespect to this team we've just played, we're going to get punished even more than what mm. we've seen today. So I think if we don't fix those issues we've seen today, exposed, we've been exposed today, that we're not as solid as we think. If we come up against a better team and, and, and God help us against Ivory Coast because we're going to get battered if we play the way we play today. Hmm. Um, okay, very well said, very well said. Let me ask another question now. Um, what do you think is the importance or maybe um, not as important um, need for a left-sided centre-back or a left-footed centre-back? Because today, Coach Jose Pesero had Basi on the bench and he played Semi Ajayi as the LCB. And we saw it in a couple moments where he had to move towards his left to defend. He was a little bit shaky. Mm. There was the one that was called for offside that the ball hit his hand when he fell down with the box. And if it wasn't offside, VAR could have easily given a penalty for that in the first half. Do you think it is important for us to have a left center, a left-footed center back that is that is composed with his left foot and can play out from defense? Or today was just an anomaly for Shemi Ajayi. What do you think? Not only is it important? Bassi is, is proven is a quality centre-back. You, you don't play in the Premier League if you're not a good player. Bassi is a, is a reliable centre-back. And like you say, with the left foot, he gives us that balance there. Ajay, even for West Brom, I think he plays on the right side of, this, of, of the defence. And, and he even plays in a three-man defence. Yeah, he's there. not used to playing on the left side. So, so the coach has taken a gamble because he thought, oh, Equatorial Guinea, we're going to get past this team and then maybe bring Ajayi back for the, for the tougher games ahead. But it's backfired. I don't think you should take chances. First game, go and win and get your three points. And I, I, I think now he'll regret making that decision. Mm. Okay, very well said. Thank you for the insight. Um, let's move to the midfield. Um, so we had Frank Onyeka and Alassane Yusuf 
playing together in the center of the park. Um, Oyeka seemed to be more the sitting DM in the match, mm -hmm. and Alassane Yusuf was playing box to box. You know, was 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 creating some a few chances. You know, he created a chance for Zedu Sanusi in the first half. You know, but he also took a, a beating, like I've said many times. Um, he was getting fouled a lot. You know, um, and you mentioned earlier that there was too much of a gap between our midfield and our defense. So what do you think um, about the performance of those two midfielders and how can we rectify the errors that we made in today's game? I think this is where the coach needs to step up, take responsibility. Players are playing for their clubs in different positions. You bring them to the national team and you play them in a different position. So Onyeka is not a defensive midfield player for Brentford. Mm. I, I watch Brentford a lot here in the UK. He doesn't play as a, a defensive midfield player. You bring him to the national team. It's, it's alien to him. He's not used to playing in that position. He wants to be joining the attack. Yeah. And from what I've gathered, I've not really watched this Alassane Yusuf. What I've heard is he's a defensive midfield player. So all of a sudden, now he's playing <laughs> he's ahead of Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one doing the box to box. And fair enough, he had the energy, like you said, he could run, he could mark, he, he was doing a lot of work. But at the same time, we need to be more solid. So, yes, he was running about, but the, the midfield was too open. Iwobi wasn't doing the defensive side, Lukman was half doing the defensive. So we weren't solid as a team, and that's where the responsibility lies with the coach. Make these decisions, set us up correctly, because it doesn't matter what quality of players we have. If we don't set up in the right way, we're going to be exposed. And players need to also speak up. I've said this before. If you don't feel comfortable playing in a certain position or you don't think it's working first 10, 15 minutes, make a change or speak to the coach on the touchline and say, coach, we're struggling here. We're outnumbered in midfield. What do we do? But everyone is just quiet, carrying on. The coach has told us what to do. I said before the tournament, for Nigeria to win this AFCON, no disrespect to this coach, the players will have to ignore his instructions and, and take responsibility themselves, make the changes required on the pitch to win this AFCON. But I don't think that will happen. Very interesting points there. Um, and some people in the comments, just to um, acknowledge the comments, some people are saying that Alassane Yusuf is also a box-to-box -box midfielder. And I will say, Alassane Yusuf has played box-to-box -box sometimes, but if you watch his games for Real Antwerp, most of the time he plays as a as a DM, you know. And even if you want to say, okay, he has the quality to play box to box, um, the reality, at least in my own opinion, he's a better tackler than Frank Onyeka. You know, um, he he commands the midfield in the sense of just running about and covering ground better than Frank Onyeka. And Frank Onyeka can contribute in the attack better than he than Alassane Yusuf would. So even if you have to make a choice, okay, you have two players that you think are box-to-box -box, and one has to play as a sitting DM, the other one has to play box-to-box. -box. Why not go with the better tackler, the one that intercepts more passes to be sitting, yeah. and then the person that, you know, that contributes better than attack. We all know Frank has the nickname, Frank the Tank. Yeah. He has that nickname for a reason mm. because he goes from one box to the other mm. and he gives in a performance. We see it for Brentford when he plays. Um, so... It's, it's, it's a bit disappointing the way the coach said that. Also, if you've got wingers who are not helping defensively, mm. then those midfielders who want to do box to box need to pick and choose when they do that. Because if you vacate that midfield, yeah, you want to go and help the attack and score. If the ball gets turned over, the midfield, we've got just one player mm. waiting there. And, and that's what happened. So you've got to be careful. If you've got wingers who will help you, back in the days, we had Finidi, George, Emmanuel, Aminike, players like this. 4-4-2 doesn't work in this modern-day football unless you've got wingers who are willing to do the dirty part of the job, which is to come and solidify that midfield and help out defensively, which I don't think we have in this team now. Mm. Very well said. Um, and somebody in the comments is saying, no, that um, Yusuf contributes more um, in attack. Um, but again, I'll say... The question I'll ask you is, when have you ever seen or heard that Alassane Yusuf scored a goal? I know that he has contributed one assist recently that you probably point to and say, oh, but got an assist. The reality of it is, Yusuf is not really a player that you expect to contribute anything in attack. Frank Onyeka, we saw the game, um, the friendly we played, I think, was it against Saudi? Um, one of the recent friendlies that we played. You know, he showed us that if you give him a chance on the edge of the box, he can actually create something out of it. And at the same time, he just 
is, in my opinion, a better box to box than Alassane Yusuf. As much as I like Alassane Yusuf, you know, he had a fantastic game. Um, I just think that the coach could have swapped the roles and would have done well. Okay, I see Juwan Oshaniwa is here, um, our second guest. Let me bring you on. Let me bring you on so that you can join us. I would like to hear your thoughts as well. Um, but, um, Abbe George, just before um, he comes on, what did you think of the decision to play Lukman on the left and Simon on the right? I gave my thoughts. I feel like the coach got that wrong because Simon was largely ineffective. But what, what did you think? I think he was trying to accommodate Simon. I think he, he prefers Lukman on the left, but he doesn't want to leave Simon out of the team completely. So he's just accommodating Simon. And we know Simon is not as, as um, productive on the right-hand side. So I think that's where it's gone, where he doesn't want to disappoint Moses Simon. So I'll just put you on the right just so you're starting the game. I think he needs to be brave enough. You need to, to pick your team and stand by your decision. Don't be scared of players. Don't feel like you have to impress or please the players. If you prefer Lukman over Moses, Moses sits on the bench, vice versa. If you prefer Moses, Lukman sits on the bench. So I, I don't think he should be accommodating players. I think he needs to make, a, make his decision and stand by them. Um, okay, and on that note, let me welcome um, Juwan Oshaniwa, AFCON 2013 champion. Um, so we know that you know what it takes to win a game. You played that game against Burkina Faso, where Sonny Mbasko, that, that fantastic goal that we'll never forget. At least before we can afford to even forget that goal, we need to win another one and maybe we'll have something else to talk about. Um, but yes, 1-1 um, against Equatorial Guinea. You know, what did you think of the performance from the boys today? I think, I think uh, generally every game or every footballer going into a game, they always want to uh, desire uh, or aspire to carry the whole three maximum points of the game. And when it comes to football, you know, as far as Nigeria is concerned, the football lover of this nation is concerned, they want nothing outside that maximum three points. Um, for me, as a player, I'm talking from the player uh, aspect now. I think it's not too bad stuff. Mm. Yeah, in as much as we so desire to go into the game and come out with maximum three points, why I, I still think because the same thing have, uh, happened to us at the AFCOM 2020, uh, 2013 that we won. We, we drew our first game. Ah. Against Burkina Faso. Yeah. And uh, even... The second game we did as well. It was our last game that we won. And before you know it, it now makes us uh, come out freely and make us more stronger to our next uh, opponent that we had to play against. So generally, I would say at least, yeah, in as much as there are a lot of loopholes, there are rooms for better uh, better man in the next or uh, our next coming game. Uh, I think that one point is still better for us. We're staying the course. Mm. Okay. Um, and I I'll ask you this um, question as well. Um, do you think that maybe the the level of disappointment, you know, with all due respect to the 2013 squad, um, do you think maybe the level of disappointment is a lot more now versus maybe drawing that first game against Burkina Faso in 2013? Because this is a group, you know, a set of players that everybody sees how much talent we have in the squad. Everybody has high expectations for them. And even themselves, you know, they've been talking about it. Um, the coach, since he took the job, he said his goal is to win the AFCON. Again, that's not to say that we, we will not still win the AFCON because we drew this match. But do you think that because of the level of expectation this time around, that's why people, you know, would be and are justified to be more disappointed in a 1-1 against Equatorial Guinea? Yeah, for sure. Sure, everyone should be disappointed. Yeah, we the football fan because now I'm now a football fan, <laughs> so uh, we actually disappointed. And like you said earlier, that the coach said, uh, he's going there to win. Yeah, it is easy to say football is a practical something you have to carry it out, and uh, there is no pushover in the world of football any longer. So, you saying, Oh, me, I talk doesn't settle this course. 
It is the 90 minutes that tells you understand. And it is the way you lie, you lay your bed, you, 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 you lay your bed, you're going to lie on it. You understand? So I, I, I think he still need to do more from the technical aspect of it. He still need to do more. He still need to put, put up his team well because I don't see this cohesiveness in their play. That is just the truth. Yeah, our attack line, it is bomb. It is bomb. Yeah, we know the, the, the kind of uh, uh, ability that we paraded at the attack line. But where is the supply? Yeah. Where, is, where is the supply? This guy, we talk about Osime, we talk about the likes of uh, uh, Chukweze Samuel, uh, Wook. Just name them. If mm. no That's good supply, mm. how would they be uh, uh, prolific before be, in the game? Or before, uh, uh, right at the front of the goalpost and all that. At least where they are playing week in, week out, you see how they supply these guys' ball and you see how they finish. So that mm. is just it. He needs to do more, the coach, not just to just talk, talk, talk at the press or they'll they just put your home well, put your team well, and let's see and wait for the outcome of it. Mm. But when you don't do the right, right thing and you, you want a positive result, man, I think. Uh, it's going to be difficult. That's mm. just the truth. But okay, let me let me. Only the disappointment okay. we are all disappointed with the outcome. Mm. Okay, well said, well said. And I see people in the comments are agreeing with you on comments that you made as well. A mere talk cannot win any game for us. We need to actually put in the work before and during the ninety minutes on the field. Um, but let me let me um go back to um Abbey George. You know, um, you had gone through the other positions, but the one player that we haven't really spoken about yet um is Victor Osime. Osime is our star boy. He's the best player in Africa. You know, um, and Juwan Janiwa is talking about, oh, where's the supply? Where's the supply? But um, today, you know, Osime had a guilt edge moment towards the end of the game. A fantastic two ball by Alex Iwobi, one on one with the goalkeeper. You know, I was, I was literally already on the edge of my seat, getting ready to jump and celebrate the goal. And then, you know, he, he missed it wide. Um, Abby George and also Juwan Juana after, um, what, what do you think went through his mind? Do you think he was nervous in that moment or it was just one of those misses that can happen? What do you think was the case there? I think sometimes these things can happen, but um, maybe he thought he was offside, maybe he was too relaxed because when you listen to strikers most of the time, they tell you when they have too much time to think, mm. that's when they complicate what they want to do. Sometimes it's instinctive. Those times where they don't have to think within second, bang, is in. So I think when you speak to, I've listened to many strikers all, all over the world over the years talk about chances 1v1. Sometimes they say when you have too much time, too many options come through your mind and you, you, just, you just freak out, basically. So it's, it's unlike him to miss that kind of chance and he missed the goal by a wide margin, which is, which is disappointing. And I'm sure... We can say we're disappointed here. He'll be the one more disappointed in himself yeah. because from what we've seen, he's the killer. He wants to score every game. He wants to win every game. So he'll be more disappointed than us. And I think he'll be looking to the next game to rectify and maybe, you know, score one or two more goals to put that behind him. Mm. And hopefully he does because I predicted Osime to win the golden boot. So we need him to take those chances. Yeah. Um, what you want... Um, what, what did you think of that Osime miss? You know, do you agree with um, Abbey George? It was just one of those things, or do you think there was more to it? Yeah, 100% I agree with him. You understand? He's got a lot of time on it. And, uh, you know, the goalkeeper's, the, 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 the goalkeeper's reaction, uh, he just came off his line and narrowed the, the goalpost. So this even make it more difficult for him as a striker. Like he rightly said, uh, he always wants to score. That is just it. Where the kind of uh, uh, talent he's got and the ability he's got, we know the kind of potential of him. He always wants to score. And I know, even before the kick, kickoff of the, the, the tournament, he's already got it inside himself that he's going there, not to just go there, but to go there and leave a trademark and leave something there in the tournament. So him having that chance and not be able to convert it, honestly speaking, I know too well that he's going to be uh, uh, disappointed. But... You cannot take it from him. He's still our best striker. He's still the best striker of the, the, the continent. 
So at least he, 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 had, he had his uh, name booked for a goal, recorded for a goal in this very account. So uh, there is always a better day ahead for him in the tournament. The next game, I don't know precisely when the next game is coming up. I know he's going to do some justice and uh, uh, correct this loss. Mm. Um, okay, um, before we move into um, looking ahead, I want to ask one more thing about this match. And I want to ask this to the both of you as well, because you were both defenders in your, in your day. Um, and we saw early in the match, about the eighth minute of the game, um, Zedu Sanusi, a good cross from Alassane Yusuf, the right-hand side. And Zedu Sanusi found himself in the box. For the first 15 minutes, Sanusi was almost playing like a left winger. You know, and he found himself in the box. The ball came to him. Um, he couldn't control the shot and he played it wide of the target. You know, you guys were both defenders in your day. Um, you both played as fullbacks. Um, do you think we should cut him some slack? You know, he's a defender. He doesn't practice. Maybe he doesn't practice finishing as much as, as, as other players. You know, or do you think that he, he should have scored this chance and he would know that he should have scored it? Um, you can go first, Joel. Uh, I think, I think at that very position that he found himself, I think he was just a bit shy. He should have, he should have just taken the opportunity, then try to hit the ball. Just hit it, shoot at the target. Just make sure you control the, 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 the ball, your shot. Just hit the target. You don't need to square play there because he's already at the center of the, uh, the goal post. So you don't need to pass this ball any longer. Just strike the ball as a fullback. Just strike the ball there. It is better for you, like, okay, eat it out. Make the goalkeeper make a hard, hard, hard save. You understand? But like you rightly said from your question, uh, uh, maybe because of a defender, come on, man. He's a professional. And he's playing for, for, for uh, a Champions League team, big team like Porto in Portugal. So you understand, he's playing week in, week out. So I wouldn't want to take that out. Oh, maybe it's because he's a defender or whatever. No, 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 no. At least we can see the way fullbacks now, the way they score goals, they bank goals uh, uh, abroad. So, but that very particular position that he found himself, I think no shifting of responsibility. He has to. He just has to do it like that. Just convert it. Shoot. Shoot the ball on target and let's see. Hmm. I think I think, think Ayo he's covering the second chance he had in the game, not the first one you were talking about. Yeah. The first few minutes he had one where he hit it over the bar. That's the one you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one was just his technique. He was leaning back slightly, and that's why he played it over the over the crossbar. But I think he just got it technically wrong in that moment. That hmm. was it. He, he he went for the perfect uh, application, which was the side foot. But he was leaning back mm. slightly. Okay, and what do you think about the second chance I had as well that um, Joan was talking about? I think that one you gotta go for goal. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a shot there. Take responsibility. Have a shot. Shoot a cross goal. If the keeper saves, yeah. it carries out to your teammate who can mm. tap it in. So mm -hmm. you always go a cross goal, um, or if you're gonna go near post, you go near and high, across low and hard. That's the way yeah. we were coached. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's decisions sometimes can cost you games. It's fine margin decisions. Do you pass? Do you cross? Do you shoot? It's down to the players to make these decisions. And that's where big players' experience comes in. Yeah. For me, for me, like, these guys won the tournament in 2013. They, they had a leader on the bench, Stephen Keshi, rest in peace. Okay. And they had leaders on the pitch. You can't compare those two squads because... We don't have a leader on the coach. This coach hasn't got a clue. Technically, tactically, it's not, it's not it. This is not the coach that's going to deliver us. And I, don't, I don't think so. And then on the pitch, we don't have the same caliber of players as 2013. You, you had big players in that team that could pull each other, advise, encourage. We don't see any of that. Everyone just plays for themselves now in this team. We need, we need leaders on and off the pitch. And until we can find that, I don't. This team is going to fall short. Um, and okay, because you you mentioned something while you're speaking, Abi, George. You said um, near post, go hard, uh, um, high, yeah, hard, um, 
and then far post go low and across and, yeah you know low and hard across the goal yeah. um we saw we saw olaino had another opportunity you yeah. know in the cool. second half where he he got the ball in a good position inside the box i personally felt like maybe in that moment he should have tried to square it you know to in the middle for Osime, but he went low towards the was it was he going across goal? I don't remember it exactly. Good. And the keeper, yeah. keeper made, and the keeper made, made a save. That was a yeah, with his, save with that the goalkeeper yeah. made. That was a save that the yeah. goalkeeper yeah. made. So yeah. it's good. Yeah. yeah. So do you think do you think Olayo made the right decision in that moment? Yes. Yeah. Of course he did. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Not 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 too much to be said there. Like, there, there's two right decisions you can make. Either you you mm. cross low and hard, mm -hmm. or you shoot low and hard. The, mm -hmm. Those are right decisions. There's no wrong out of the two. Mm. Yeah, the keeper has made a good save with his with his right foot. So that's a that's a save. That's not you a give miss. credit to yeah. the keeper for that one. Yeah. Okay. Um and then finally, um Samuel Chukwezi, um, because when you were talking as well, we kept on talking about decision making, decision making, decision making. Um Chukweze is a very talented player. We've known this for years. You know, we've seen him do very well for Villarreal. Um, you know, and now he plays for AC Milan, but coming into today's game, you know. In my opinion, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. It seemed like almost every time he got the ball in a good position, the final decision that he made, either the pass he was attempting or the pass that he did not attempt, you know, just seemed to be the wrong of the options that he had. Um, what do you think about Chukwese and his decision making in today's game? I think Chukwese's yeah. inclusion in the national team is based on his club performances, which has been outstanding. He got a good move from Villarreal to, to AC Milan carried on his good form, week in, week out, is performing at a very high level. But in the colours of the national team, the Super Eagles, were yet to see that same form transferred to the national team. I don't know why, whether it's the coaching, the position, the, 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 the pace of the game, because African football sometimes can be slow. Mm. And Chukwe is a, relies on his pace, maybe counter-attack when the space opens up, he can run at defenders. African football sometimes it's slow you don't have that big space to go 1v1 and so i think maybe he's struggling to to transition from european football to african football that's just my opinion mm. what do you think of yeah i think i think uh he's doing everything right but the final product of his uh doings is the place that i think i have issue with uh he has to take this deep breath in his final decision making because I think that is where he's found wanting in this very game. But I understand with him just coming, coming, coming on from uh, again. You you could see like almost eight, nine, ten minutes is nowhere to be found before he now got those things. Before he started moving, you know, it's it's that 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 time that he comes on. It takes like a big art and you know this maturity that that, uh, that you put in in a football that could make you come out and uh give a good good uh account of yourself when such opportunity comes your way but like i said there is always a room for improvement for him he's a young lad he's coming up he's just coming up now yeah him he's been on the 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 the, the trademark now with, because of of his performance with his club side so african football they like these two football these two 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 side of the coin it's a different uh ball game entirely what you face there at europe is different from african football they wouldn't just jump into you they've got patience you will see where you're driven somebody uh, you're dribbling somebody somebody before you know it another one is giving a good and you know a lot of strength so he needs to calm down like John has, uh, has, uh, has said earlier, just calm down, take that deep breath, raise up your head, pick the final spot, and before you know it, it will start producing the way he is doing at the hero. Oh. Um, okay, okay. And um, let me ask you this question about the coach as well. You know, because we've, we've all, myself and both of you, we have said that the coach needs to do more. The coach needs to improve his technical side of the game. Um, does a coach maybe look at people like us and say, come, what do you want me to do? Osime had one-on-one, -on -one, he missed. Samusi had chance, he did not take. You know, is there any room for the coach to say, I did my job? 
and the players just did not finish. You know, do you think he can say that, or does the blame have to eventually fall on top of his head? Yes, but say let's say Osimen takes that chance and we win two one. That's covering over the cracks. That wasn't a convincing performance mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. the, if we have aspirations to win the Afghan, then you're judged against your position and how you play. So if we're going to come up against Senegal. And, and Egypt and Morocco and the top teams in Africa and play this way, then we've got no chance. So we're only judging to, as to what we've seen in today's performance. And, okay, let's, let's, let's forget about that chance. If we win, we believe we've, we've, we've played a great game. We haven't. We've won the game, but we haven't played well. Because if you look at our midfield, that is a very, very big concern. Our defence, big concern. So the coach needs to do a lot and also like you say okay the players need to bring their own performances up a level take their chances when they get it but the way you set us up is going to afford and provide the opportunities for those players to flourish and um, what do you think Joan? yeah going back to your question are you saying no i'm i'm this asking. performance are you saying are you saying this performance that we put up against Ikusara Gene, if we put it up against the team like Morocco team, uh, Senegal team, or this Africos team, will it, are we going to come out with a point? Mm. No, no. <laughs> at least just do the right thing. Even if the result doesn't come, at least those that know football will like, oh, okay, we can see this team is growing. Mm. The next game, that mm. atom of love that they so desire to crown yeah. that better that 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 better uh game that they put up mm. we come but this one let's be realistic this is not the best that that, that could that could fetch us better outcome let's be realistic mm. so there is always a room for improvement it, yeah it is not the coach that we go there to play but it is his duty to to collectively put the team back put some things See, we need to have structure. This is how, like our light, like like our time during our time. You, we know the big boys. He he knows what he wants. He picked me up from the home base, and all that. He knows what he wants, and I could I could I could tell you like this man. He put all those things in our head. Like come, since I'm building this thing around the home base, have. 50% of foreign base, 50% of home base, this is what I actually want. So whenever we're meeting, we already know what this man actually wants from us. So we, going onto the pitch, we already know. If we're not ready to put, it will even tell you, if you're not ready to give your 100% plus while wearing this jersey, this color, drop the jersey, just tell me, we're not going to fight. We have handshake, then you leave the camp. And you, you already know it that hey you are resuming the camp you know man i just have to do it the way he wants and like george said he, he is a leader he plays mm. the game he captain he did it in fact he is the real boss mm. the big boss that, that that is what he is so we actually want we actually know what he wanted from us and we have the likes of uh 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 Yobo, uh, Captain Yobo, Vicente Enyema, to see Mikel, everybody like putting us through, moving, like moving, try to move the team towards the, the direction of the coach. You understand? But this present one, I don't okay. see them playing. Uh, there is no cohesiveness between them. That is just the truth. Mm. That is just, I know, the just, truth. just to add to what he said, then, do you think? Players like Chukweze, who's struggled to find his feet in the national team, game after game, we're still waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. If Stephen Keshi was coach, I don't believe Steve, uh, Chukweze will be in this team right now. Sure. Either, sure. either you call sure. and improve your performances, or you don't get called up. That, and I don't, that is just it. I don't think this coach has the passion or the power to, to make those decisions in this team right now. I think no. the players are bigger than him. No. He doesn't have the power to say, listen, if you don't perform, even if you come on for 10 minutes, 
if you don't show the passion, the desire that you want to represent this team, you don't get called up. So if you don't have a strong leader, then then that's a recipe for failure, not success. Very, very, very well said from both of you. I appreciate your, your analysis and insights. Um, okay, let's let's look ahead now. Um, we have, you know, tournament time. You don't have a week to go and talk on your bad performance, you know, and At figure all. things out. Um, our next match is coming up in four days against Ivory Coast. You know, I, I watched, I'm guessing you guys must have watched Ivory Coast game yesterday. You know, um, one key area of their play, of their performance yesterday was their midfield. Seko Fafana, Ibrahim Sangari, and um, Frank Kessi, they, they bought that midfield yesterday. They dominated. You know, Fafana scored a beautiful goal, had another chance to score. You know, and they also created good opportunities for their attackers. Um, they linked up the defense the, to the attack very well. You know, they didn't appear to have that many gaps. Even though, yes, their performance wasn't the best, you know, as many would have expected. They got tired in the second half as well, but they were able to get a relatively comfortable result. Um, looking at our, our game against the Ivory Coast in four days' time, what do you think needs to be fixed very quickly for us to have a chance of getting a positive result? If, if I was the coach, which I obviously I'm not, I'm, I'm sat here in the UK on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> With the players we have, I've always said it. If you're going to come up against that kind of midfield, we need to match them power for power. There's mm -hmm. no point going playing all fancy football with these guys. These guys are, are, are running machines. They will run non-stop. I know you said they, get, they got tired towards the end. But that home crowd they've got behind them will give them extra energy. So when, when, when it gets to the 80th minute, 75th minute, when people are getting tired, the fans will push them along. So we, we need to make sure our midfield is solid. So if I was the coach, I would go for a solid three-man midfield. None of this run here, box to box, vacate the midfield. Stay compact, stay solid. If it's nil-nil, 85th minute, that's a good result against Ivory Coast, in my opinion. But we can't afford to be open and exposed against the quality of Ivory Coast because they'll punish us big time. And you what do you think um, we can do to improve ahead of that game against us? Yeah, like he rightly analyzed, and from your question, yeah, it is no news. The fact remains the midfield of Avricos, the, the likes of Sangari, uh, uh, Fofana, and um, Kelsey, it's a kind of battle that we can win. But the only way we, we actually can do is match them up foot to foot. And create space at the wing. Let's exploit the wing where they have they have the likes of uh, what is it called? And which he is still struggling with his fitness. Uh, uh, your hurry. And they are the left uh, left back. They got a place three. I think I know too well that our wingers they are very fast. That is the place that we need to to explore not trying to play in the midfield like them. Yeah, if they hold the ball, we bounce on them. One after, like, one, one, one on one, we match foot to foot with them, and immediately we get the ball, we open it wide. Our wingers run out, get the ball, bring this ball across. Our, that man, that young lad at the middle of Semi, he's waiting for this ball. You know he is good in the head. And the, the, whosoever is playing from behind, just come in. Because if we know we don't have the quality in the middle to play like the three, three, three guys of Ivory Coast. So I just believe where we can explore or use is that space behind them at the wing. So that is what I think we could do. And at the defense line, come tight, close, just narrow it. Narrow the, 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 the goal post, our target for them. Once we get the ball, put the ball to the wing. Let's run them out there, bring it to the, the, uh, to, to the uh, box for the big lad there. Let him score. Mm. Um, okay, and talking about that midfield battle, you know, we have to hear information from the national team camp, but we saw Alassane Yusuf get stretched off today. Um, he put in a good performance while he was on the, on the field, you know, um, worked his tail off for the national team. Um, 
But if we happen to be missing Alassane Yusuf against Ivory Coast, how would you like us to, you know, which three players would you like to see in that midfield? I think Oyedika has to come in because we don't have many options in midfield. When I looked at the squad, when the squad was announced, I was thinking this midfield, there one or two injuries, one suspension, no, no, and no, we're no, struggling no. big time. So Oyedika has to come in alongside Oyeka and then somebody else who's going to be willing to run yeah. because just playing fancy football and only work when you have the ball is not going to achieve any success for us. Mm -hmm. We need three players in there that will be willing to cover ground, mark players, track your runners and do, do the hard grab for 95 minutes. So unless we're willing to do that, we're going to struggle. But but I will I would be hoping that the coach would see sense and solidify that midfield. And if he, if you have to play even three five two, that's another option. I don't know if they've practiced or if the coach has that option in his locker to change things if need be. I've never seen us venture towards the three five two formation, which can make us more solid. We've got wing backs. We've got players that can that can run up and down the sides. Give us three centre backs. Three in the midfield, choke everything up. There's no space for the Ivorians to come through us. Mm. But if he wants to stick to his 4 4 2, I'm going to watch it from behind my couch. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, in the game against Guinea that we played and lost 2 0 before the AFCON, you know, the coach did say that he played a 3 4 3 formation. So he wants to have that as a backup option. Mm. Um, so maybe we could see 3 4 3 against Ivory Coast because when I, I kind of also guess that. You know, that might be what he was preparing for, you know, to kind of have more options in the middle of the pack, just more compact in the middle of the field so that we're not giving away too many chances. Um, but, um, do you want to know what? Um, what do you think? Which three midfielders would you like to see, you know, in that game against Ivory Coast? Um, just assuming Alassane Yusuf is not able to play. Yeah, George, George came up with, with, with an option. Uh, I think that 3 5 2 will go well. Just bring in three central uh, central defense just to make sure you you choke the midfield. Don't allow those three guys of uh, Sangari connections of Sangari, Kesi, and uh, Fofana to have the play because whatsoever that made us that makes us to lose that battle at the midfield, then forget it. We are gone against Ivory Coast. Mm. So the the plan B or the second option. The, the George just talked about now, as far as I'm concerned, I concur with it. With it. Uh, let's play three, three, three center back. We have this guy, what was he called, Aina, and he's doing a good job. We have Osai, and uh, we have the Saidu himself. Then we have wingers that they can just run these people out. Like I told you, we, the place that I think we can explore in all of this game, is the wing mm. is the wing because i saw i saw i saw sergio already is seriously struggling 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 all through and uh their left back i think no 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 that place we can also equally use that with a, a lot of our our fastness quick thinking once we it is not like we win the ball and we want to play through the middle no we get the ball one two pass then let's see those runner up there behind them they are heavy legs. They are heavy legs. So that is the place that I think we can come out successful against Africans. Solidify that midfield. Make sure we win the battle of that, that, that midfield against them. Then I think we'll be carrying the day. Yeah, I... So this is where the coach needs to do a lot of job. He knows the, 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 the squad. We are just talking here. He is the one that trained with the squad. So you should know the one or the player that is fitting for that plan B or option that we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I also to, to touch up on that, I think I wouldn't write us off completely just... No, no, no. We're still in the course. Because we have quality in the squad. If yes. we up correctly, and sometimes the better the opposition... The, the more the players raise their own games as well because you, 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 you see the opposition as either equal or superior. 
and that makes you want to test yourself you want to bring your own performance up as well so that might bring out the best in our players knowing that if you don't bring your max you're going to mm -hmm. get yeah you're going to get wiped out so yeah. i think it might bring out the best in us so i wouldn't write us off completely but you can't afford to be open and conceding early goals because mm -hmm. once you concede an early goal, they, their backs get up, the fans are behind them. It's going yeah, to be yeah. 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 Very well said. And I see Samokalu here is saying 3 4 3. I don't think it's going to work because we'll have too many midfield. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, um, you are both suggesting 3 5 2, you know, yeah. instead of the 3 4 3 that the coach um, went with against, against Guinea because even the game that he did it, we still lost 2 0. So. Um, hopefully things can can get better um so i guess the only thing left is for us to hear from some of the fans you know they might have one or two questions um for you guys as well to hear your expert opinions so let me just try to bring people on um guys if you want to come on please send a request we'll have to take it fairly quickly um i know that a lot of people you know have one eye on the game that's going on right now even i want to watch the game um so let's take it fairly quickly so that we can bring as many people as possible within the next you know few minutes and round off um i'll start with my um experienced journalists that i see have sent me requests are you still here Suleiman? okay while i'm waiting for Suleiman, um, i see austin also sent a request austin has been here from the start um and then Nigeria Football Empire, get ready, I'll bring you on as well. Uh, it's like everybody that sends requests is, is not accepting. Um, okay. Egypt, the one nil up. Yeah, Egypt, one nil up within the first three minutes. <laughs> okay. Since Sulaiman is not, doesn't appear to be here, Austin doesn't appear to be here. Let me bring other people on. Hello. Hey, how's everybody doing? Yes, well, good. How are you? Um, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Um, my name is Prince. Um, I go by um, Nigerian Fire on um, Instagram. I'm I'm here in Texas, um, Dallas, Texas. Um, so I watched the game. I was not like, I mean, if you if you notice yesterday, I was saying something. I said that the Guinea that played yesterday against Ivory Coast is better than the Super Eagles. I watched the game because I've watched like Super Eagles last seven games. They can put passes together. So like, they, oh, they, because you have to build your confidence based on the last game, right? Mm. So based on the, all the last games we've played, they have been struggling. There's no team, you know? And I look at the, the provisional lace, we only have five mid midfielders. I'm like, okay, well, why are we, okay, today Yusuf is injured, right? So if Yus Yusuf is, who's gonna play that holding midfielder? What if another person get injured? Is it are they gonna drive drive all the strikers to come and play midfield? So like there was no proper preparation and they are playing like you know I don't I don't really know what's going on with the team. But all I can say from this today's game is this first 15 minutes was okay. Um they should just calm down and see maybe they will get like a draw, a win against Africa's. But judging by the game, um there was no cohesion. Like everybody looked confused. I mean, it looks like when he uh, what's it called Joe Aribo came came into the game, it looks like he will be started playing a little bit based on the know each other. I don't know, you know, he was kind of like a little bit calm and stuff like that. But I don't know, maybe they don't know each other yet. I don't know that that's the case. But the coach needs to do something. Like we need we need more forward play. Hopefully, um, Murphy and John on Noachio is going to be around. But the, pro the problem is, even if they are around, who's going to pass the ball to them? That's, the, that's why I was in insisting when the, you know, the list came out. Let's take all those um, midfielders on all the provisional league because that would have helped. You know, like somebody like Juan Calica could have helped. But now we, we, we're not even going back to it because nothing can be done now. But based on what we have, based on what we have on, in camp right now, I don't see any positive thing that is gonna come in because he's playing he's playing um Simon and Lukman. So if you look at the bench, there's nobody that will come, you will say, okay, this person is gonna come and change it. You know, because these are the two skillful players that can come in and change. Chukwe is a might, might do something, but you know, you you, you want to look at the bench or like, okay, this person will come in and do something. If Boniface was still there, I was like, okay, yeah, Boniface will come and do something because Boniface is kind of like skillful and also a striker. 
But Murphy is not is not skillful. He will wait for somebody to pass the ball to him. Same with same with John uh, Paul on Asher. He will wait for somebody to pass the ball to him. You know, other players like we don't have any skillful winger left in the bench. Only we only have first eleven. We don't have se we don't have second eleven. We don't have any bench. So like I don't know why they think that way. I don't I don't understand if they don't want us to win or to do well in this half corner. This the selection does not make sense because. If you think about it, like Nigeria has a lot of players. Okay, I'm rounding up. Sorry, it just Nigeria has a lot of players, right? So the selection shouldn't have been problem. We could have gotten like skillful players together with the midfielders, but that's not the case. And I just wish them good luck. Hopefully, we can win against um Ivory Coast. Then we'll see. Like the first game was okay. You know, the second half was kind of like a little bit okay. But they just need to calm down and at least make 10 passes together. If they can make 10 passes together, we'll be fine. Because it looks like once um, Ekon gets the ball, he puts it up to, um, up to the striker. The same thing with um, Senyaja. He just moves the ball hard, a lot forward. And once they lose it, they start coming back. So let them calm down. Maybe, you know, watch the game and see the mistakes they make. Maybe from there they can improve. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I appreciate your contribution. Please remove yourself so that I can bring... Okay, okay. Person. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Um, before the next person comes on, um, Abe or um, do you have anything to say about his contribution that he made? Or... No, I, I, I think we all have our opinions, you know, as fans. We're Nigerian fans, mm -hmm. even though we can come and our opinions might differ mm -hmm. and we might mm -hmm. be on certain points. We all want the team to win. At the end of the day, That's we want that to win. And uh, everyone is entitled to their opinions and what they see as they watch the games. Um, so he's entitled to his opinion. And we just believe that the players we have can do more. And, and the coach needs to, to get the best out of these players he's picked for this tournament. Mm. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Adetun, calling from the USA. Um, what were your thoughts on the game? Give us your... Very quickly. Um, Jumo and Jajabe, I agree too. Legends, yeah. and thank, thank you for Hi, bro. Thank, thank you for your service to the nation. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. What I want to say is this: I think um, I see maintain that fact that we are going to win the Afcon. I'm not going to change my 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 my, my decision, my all my my thought. I said I'm still going to win the Afcon. But what I want is that the players that I feel didn't do well today, they should please step up their game. I will pick. I, will, I don't want to tap the player. The more I will pick Moses Simon and a player for my team. Shukwese, that you please set up their game. Oh, they didn't do well today. They didn't do well. Alasa Yusuf, fantastic demos, fantastic put for him. But I will still blame him for the goal because he left his man. You go and watch that boy. I see what you play now. He left his man. I will still blame me for that. But like I said, I don't want to tap the morale of the boys. We should get our ass together and go for good. Mm. But Moses Simon, he wasn't clicking on the right on the on the right side. He went to the left side. He wasn't click, he didn't click too. He, he, he didn't click too. But I don't I think he lasted too long on the pitch. He lasted Maybe too he, long, you think? Yeah. It lasted too long. Maybe that plumber, that plumber that called himself our coach, should have brought it, should have brought should have changed him earlier on. You know, then Chukweze needs to grow. He needs to grow. He's not a new player. He's been playing football for a long time since. He's not, he should grow. But I want the two of them to step up their games. When they step up, I still believe, everybody, everybody can call me Joseph the Dreamer, but I still believe. We are going to win this Afcon. I think we are going to win this Af Af Afcon. Okay, um, Mr. Adinato, before I before I let you go, um, considering the fact that you are here saying that you still believe that the Super Eagles are going to win this Afcon, um, what is your prediction for the game against Ivory Coast? Uh, three points. For today's match, I predicted three three one in favor of Nigeria. But since we get that. I think against uh, uh, Africa, we are going to we are going to beat them. We are going to get three points. I want to pay. 
our star man, our star man should get his mojo back. If you please get me today, I don't want to blame him, but I need him to he didn't do what we expected him to do. But he should please. He should please do the need for against against Afcon. That why that why he should become the king of Africa that he is. He should show the, the whole world that he's the best player in Africa. So he should do that. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please remove yourself so that I can bring um, another person on. Thank you. Um, okay, so Avi George, let me just ask you. Based on added on things, feeling, you know, he said he made his prediction before the tournament. Even though we were disappointed in the first game, he's not he's not changing his, his position. You know, do you think that kind of confidence is, is good to have, or is it you know <laughs> is it confidence in the, in the wrong thing? <laughs> I think that's just being optimistic. You know, as as fans of football. We always hope and, and we want to think positive of our teams. Mm. Um, sometimes we need to be realistic. And, and when I look at this team, look at the squad, people are saying, oh, we need a, a creative midfield player. We need a JJ or Kocha. We don't have that at the moment. So let's just get that out of the way. We don't have that kind of player at the moment. Yeah. We have what we have. They've picked their squad. Now we have to support the team. And the coach needs to get the best out of this squad he decided to go with. Mm. For me, you can still win without a JJ or Kocha. You can still win without having that creative midfield player. I mean, if you look at the, the few years ago, Liverpool won the Champions League. Look at the midfield. There was no creativity. They had three journeymen workhorses that will run up and down for nine, eight minutes if needs mm. be. So... All we need to do is get those three players in that midfield who are willing to work for the team. If we can do that, we keep ourselves solid. We have players that can create chances and score goals. So I have no fear going forward. My concern has always been our defence. Mm. All right. Thank you, um, Avi Judge. Um, okay, over to you, Okat. Um, thanks for joining. Just very quickly, what are your, what are your thoughts after today's game? Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. And um, I'll say a big hello to uh, George Abbey. Hello. Uh, super because legend um well you know you know me i'm always very feisty with my with my reviews but uh it just feels like i've lost i've lost the energy to even you know keep on talking the problem is no matter how beautiful or how you know efficient a car is if you give it to a shoddy driver there's not no, nothing you can do and we can be op as optimistic as we can that's just us being like Nigerians and wanting our team to do to do well, but when you think about the technicalities of the team, you know I've always told you, IoT, I, I don't think we can make it past the second round at most. Why is because we've seen this. We can be as optimistic, like I said, as we can, uh, as we want to be, but the reality stares us in the face. This team has got quality <coughs> players, but with a clueless manager, and there's nothing that can be done to 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 sort of like you know refurbish that or change that it's still going to be the obvious reality and that's the reality of our team our manager is clueless he's stuck in the old ways and old times and he's unwilling to change and that's what brings me to that's what brings me to the technical crisis if the manager is clueless someone like finiti george can chip in one or two things maybe based on his experience i'm not trying to call him out but i'm just like i'm not seeing anything from him Whenever I see him, it's just uh, just you know just looking. I, I don't know what they do behind behind the cameras, but I just feel like this man needs some help to make this team perform. But I've not seen anything from the technical crew as well. And um, uh, you know, when the list came out, I I you know obviously we had our conversation at your tea, and I told you, I said we don't have a central attacking midfielder, like we don't have anyone that can connect. And then he's making Iwobi play so deep. Iwobi himself is not. Like, oh, oh, he doesn't give a 10%, I'm sorry, a, a 10, 10 over 10 performance in games. But when you're playing him too deep, you're, you're limiting whatever opportunities he can give a, a, as well. So I, I think everything is just wrong from the preparation. When the squad came out, I was like, why didn't he call 27 players when we were given the opportunity to call 27? And I remember you, I'm not calling you IoT, but I remember you saying, oh, that's what he wants. That's what he can walk with. I'm like, it's just common sense. Have you not factored in injuries? Have you not factored in... So these guys, Teramofi and the likes, that he's calling last minute. It will take time for them to sort of like gel, you know, with the team and perform. So 
in a nutshell, not to take too much of your time, I still stand on my words. I'm not expecting much from Super. I will support them. You can see I'm wearing my jersey today. I will support them, hoping they do well. But that's just my my that's just my gut feeling. But my my head is telling me there's there's not much to 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 get from this yeah. team. All right, thank you very much. You know, um, a, a little bit of a downcast um, analysis and pretty from it's, you. It's but just it's, it's just the reality. You. I'm sorry. Yeah, just all right. Just to, to pick up on what he just said there. The likes of Finidi George, we know, okay, he's a good coach, ex-player and everything. But we have to understand, Pesero never picked Finidi George as his assistant. The NFF. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when, when the NFF pick assistants for the head coach, you're just there to make up the numbers. If Finidi George was to stand up on the touchline and start shouting, he's undermining the coach and that would never happen. Mm -hmm. the, the, reason they bring these ex-players in as assistant coaches is just to, for motivation and just to to say there's something the players can relate to but as oh. for passing out information and instructions these assistant coaches don't do nothing there or they're not allowed yeah and and, 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 and uh, we have to be realistic it is not finish the judge that is contracted it is this guy yeah and you understand there is no how this guy is going to cross the line or cross the boundary mm. there is a limit that he could stretch his age yeah. or his, his contribution mm. you understand yeah, yeah due respect like total respect to 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 feeling the george but the fact still remains his assistant mm. and like george said this guy came there with his own team as well yeah his team of technical mm. crew mm. so <laughs> to an extent, Felindi just can talk. That is just it. Mm. It is Pizarro that, that was contracted. So we know too well that uh, there is a limit to which he can, he, can, he can contribute just to motivate the, boy, uh, the boys there at the camp. So I think it is Pizarro that job is given to and not Felindi George. So we shouldn't call out Felindi George now. No, no. <laughs> Because I bet you, if Finidi George was on this side now with us, he, mm -hmm. he would want to do things differently there. But he's in yeah, the sure. camp now, and his hands are tied. He can't even do okay. nothing, technically. And, and, and I will no. say, you know, that, that is something that we see even at, even at club level. When, mm -hmm. when if they happen to sack a manager and they make the assistant to be interim, all of a sudden, if he's playing a different formation, yeah. he's playing different players. Yeah. So you just know that all yeah. these, well, these guys have something else in his head, but yeah. Yeah. it all yeah. falls on the on the head coach at the end of the day. Um, okay, so to round things off, um, thank you very much, guys, um, that have joined in. I'll see if I can bring a couple people on, but I want us to end the live now. Um, let me ask you both, um, Abe George and Joan Shaniwa, um, looking forward to the Ivory Coast game. You know, we've spoken about some potential improvements that we can make, things that we can do to, to be more solid in midfield. Um, but as far as your level of confidence, um, what, what's, where are you on a scale of 1 to 10 looking ahead to Ivory Coast? Um, based on today's performance and based on the coach we're talking about, who is, in my opinion, not capable of delivering, mm. I would say my confidence level is 4.122. <laughs> <laughs> for, for one to two. I mean that's below average, <laughs> below fifty percent. So yeah. that's that's not that's not a great thing. Uh, yeah. how about you, Joe? What's the level of confidence? Uh, honestly speaking, my motivation, my morale for now, I think it's down based on what I saw in the first game that handed one one. And um what I believe we are we are Nigerians and when they talk the tougher time comes, that is when you see us come out. We, 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 we find ourselves in uh, uh, such situation while we're about to play Africa's the likes of Didi Drogba, uh, uh, Divino, uh, Zakora, Kolotore, and the rest. And in fact, we were all written of that, okay, nothing good can come out of us. Well, we spring a surprise at the end of the day. We went ahead to to lift the trophy at the end of the tournament. So I believe the, those boys and uh, they still have they still have the likes of uh, Captain Ahmed Musa there with them with the boys with the young lads there and uh, Kenneth Omero. Uh, they hope play 
vital role uh, at the 2013. They know how we do it. So I think their presence as well could gear the boys up and surprises can be spring up, but uh, <laughs> let me just say, okay, for now, let me just go like give them six. six. Yeah. Okay, so my turn. Yeah, six, six, my turn. six is more optimistic than mine. Yeah, six is more optimistic. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> And, and I will say, you know, for, for my own level of, of, of confidence, looking forward to that game, um, before the tournament started, you know, I had assumed that we'll probably go there and play a 1-1 draw, you know, against Ivory Coast. Okay. Um, so now, okay. considering the fact that Equatorial Guinea, who I thought was a much weaker side than Ivory Coast, you know, we, we managed to draw, play that 1-1 against them, I would drop my level of confidence to about a 5. So I'll go in between the both of you. <laughs> 4.16, I'll go to a 5. You know, I still believe that if the ball rolls in the right direction for us on that day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we could potentially get one or two chances. Osime, I don't expect Osime to miss chances again in the next game. No, I know, believe, so if the ball rolls in the right direction... I believe, I believe those guys, they are going to soar higher that very day. We are mm. super eagles, we know that. We never say that. <laughs> mm, amazing. Um, okay, thank you very much um, to the both of you, Abbe George and Jumo Shaniwa. You know, my first guest on this Afcon post match program. Um, hopefully, I will be able to send you invite for the knockout round. Hopefully, um, but for now, we'll we'll leave it there. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to the both of you. Um, always, always love the insight from ex professionals that have done it, and you know, you guys are thank both you, unique. Man. You guys are both unique in the sense that you've played in the Afcon. And you know, you've at least you've carried medal. You know, um, Juwan has the gold medal, um, Abby has the bronze medal, but you've both been successful at the yep. AFCON, and you know what, what you're, you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you very much, guys. George I, I not, appreciate you. Big bro now, yeah. George not big bro, so <laughs> um, all right, all the yeah. best. Thank you very yeah, much. All the best, uh, bro. Okay, Thanks, so you, you can leave on your end, please. Thank you. Um Okay, so thank you very much, guys, to everyone that joined. Um, I was trying to bring more people on, but I think, um, you know, that thing is happening again where, unfortunately, it just doesn't allow you to add more people. Um, Instagram can be like that sometimes. Okay, now that they're gone, I can bring more people. Okay, so let's um, hear your thoughts. What's your name? Hello, hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Ah. Uh, my name is Mohamed. Yes, my name is Mohamed from Abuja. From Abuja. Uh, okay, so yes, Mohamed, what are your thoughts on today's yeah. game and you know, looking forward very quickly, please? I, I don't know if you can read the reaction on my face, but I feel very frustrated because I was... <laughs> I expected more. I don't know if you like... I feel the team can give more because we have better players but on the long run when you look at it you look at okay the mentality basically we start like from the coach is it is he doing the right thing is he tell is he is he these selections that he's making are, are they, are they I, I i am totally, i'm sure i'm lost words because now i'm very frustrated because I had lots of high hopes for this team because I feel we have the players to do this. We have the players that, oh, we can actually go far and win this tournament. I, I even made a bet to my friend that Nigeria is winning this tournament because ah, I believe we have the right bet, But well, after today's game, you watch, you see that a lot of these people, I, 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 this is what I like to say, fancy football. Basically, these guys are... No, go. These guys are... Can you hear me? Yeah, go on. Okay, so a lot of them are not playing for the, the badge or, or it's just like, okay, we are just here. Okay, just put us on the field and then let's just see what we can do. Look at this um, guy that everybody's talking about, um, Al-Hassan Yusuf. He was, you agree with me that he was the best player on the field today. Yeah. And then, but let's look at it. He was not even part of the plan. He was just, he did not even make the original squad. You understand? He, so somebody who, you, you okay now he's coming in as a makeshift and then he's now he's now the star of the team this goes back to okay how is this selection being made is it that somebody is just formulating a list and then he's giving it to jose pizero and then okay him will just one two three four and then okay you guys should go and play and then these guys will do 
whatever they like. You understand? So I feel okay if somebody who is coming in as a makeshift to the team is now the one doing better, then ah, <laughs> you have a, there is a lot of things like NFF need to look at this team as okay because I feel these people should even explain to us how is this selection how how do how do they do this selection? I don't know if you understand how do they do this selection. Because I was watching the game, I don't know if you remember, there was a moment in the game when um, Zaidu Sanifsi, he made a pass, uh, he wanted to give a true ball and then he went outside. And then he was laughing. Hmm. <laughs> no, I, like, he but, was, so okay, I feel there is no so, passion, you know, there is I, nothing. I, I would just say, you know, sorry to cut you off, but I would just say, in, in a little bit of his defense, you know, sometimes some people laugh when they are nervous, sometimes some people laugh when they are upset you know laugh does not necessarily always mean oh that is funny okay you know just to just, just to say like it doesn't always mean that it's funny um but but yeah um so just finally before you go what is your level of confidence looking for a new game against that <laughs> well i feel if we put in more passion and then we put in the right players in the right position. Because when I was listening to the super good legend and George, he was, you know, talking about probably the positioning of um Al Hassan and uh, maybe Onyeka. Probably they could have been swapped. Maybe Hassan should have, you know, sit down and shielded the four men, and then Onyeka should have been the tank that he has always been for Brentford. But maybe if we put in the bright people, probably you know Bruno Onyemachi, uh coming in for Zaidu, and then we hope uh, Yusuf's um, injury is not something serious. And then Osime should maybe calm down, you know, pour cold water on his body and like, okay, young man, a lot of people are hoping on you that you need to, you need to deliver for us. So hopefully, I feel very confident that if, if they watch, if the coach goes back to his hotel, does his homework well, I feel we'll get a good result against Ivory Coast. And I'm sure I'll be on your live again to remind you that I told you we're going to win Ivory Coast. All right. Um, thank you very much for your contribution. Please um, remove yourself um, from, from your end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, that was Mohammed um, calling from Abuja. Please remove yourself, Mohammed. Okay. Thank you. Yes, um, that was Mohammed calling from Abuja. Um, I don't know if it's Mohammed that broke the whole network, but <laughs> now I'm not even able to see any of the requests to join anymore. Um, my whole app now is is just doing anyhow after Mohammed's call. Uh, but yes, on that note, I think I would have to end it. I would have to end it. Uh, make sure you you know follow us on all social media platforms. You know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be having more conversations about the AFCON, posting the videos on YouTube. We're still going to do, Smith Lai and I are going to do another debrief of today's game um, for the podcast on YouTube. You know, we'll do a preview of the game against Ivory Coast. And then make sure that you are tuned in to Eagle Striker on every match day throughout this AFCON. Um, for the game against Ivory Coast, I have one special guest confirmed. Um, and that special guest is a legend um, talking about Tai Taiwo. Tai Taiwo is going to be on with Eagle Striker, with myself, after the game against Ivory Coast. Tai Taiwo is going to be on. And I'm trying to, you know, confirm another legend to join the live um, for that day. So make sure you are here when we play against Ivory Coast on Thursday. Um, but yes, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you guys. Um, it's been a... Somebody said, why not every day? Because I have a, I have a job. <laughs> um, but yes, um, and I also have other things that are going on. Um, if if and when you guys start supporting Eagle Striker financially, we will be in a better position to do it every day. For example, Ola Cube, you can buy our merchandise. For example, you can become a member, a paying member on our YouTube channel. For example, you can sponsor our Afcon show. You know, there are different different ways that you can support and you can help us get to the point whereby this becomes an everyday thing. But unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. Um, but yes, it's been a pleasure chatting with you guys. Um, as always, um, Abby George, Juwan Shaniwa, my special guest for today. Thank you very much for your 
presence. I love hearing from legends, from people that have been there, done that. They know exactly what they are talking about. And don't forget to join me on the next live program um, against Ivory Coast. After the match, we're going to have Tai Taiwo and one other ex-Nigerian footballer on the live program. Thank you very much. My name is Ayotzi. This is Eagle Strike Adam of Nigerian Football.